track entitled Open Up. We've got the man himself in the house. He's already telling me about some crazy business. Virtual DJing and telling us, going deep. If anyone knows about any of this shizzle, it's Mickey Fitz. Well, we are going to have a chat after the next tune. Also, a mix from the mighty Mickey Finn coming up. Let's get his mics ready. It's Fabio, it's Radio 1, Friday night, Saturday morning. One more, and then the Mickey Finn. Sound of breakage. The little thing entitled hindsight. And Q. We have got in the house. Of course, we're doing a feature for the throughout the whole of February. Featuring legends. And last week we had Jumping Jack Frost. And we had to do, you know, if you're doing legends, you gotta have 
the Mickey Finn in the house. Wow. <laughs> big, big up in Glad someone thinks so. <laughs> What's happening, Mick? I'm cool. I'm really cool. Long time no see, man. A long time. What have you been up to? Too much, Fab. Loads. I've got really a lot going on at the moment. Well, you know, the, the thing is with Mickey, Mickey, he, he's got an agency running, he's, he's got labels going, he's, he's a man that likes to keep himself busy. He's like a CEO kind of figure, yeah? I get up about six in the morning and I'm just <laughs> bored, so I have to do things to break the day up. You know what? You are notorious, you know. Everyone I know, you ring people at like eight o'clock and um, wake them up, and if, if you're not up at eight, you're raging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You it up. <laughs> What's the excuse? Come on. Okay, I'll get in at five in the morning and I'm back up at nine. With no aid. Is that, well, that, coffee. Is that for real, Mick? You really do get up no I matter just, what time. Is, is there a reason behind this? Is, is it kind of yeah. ritual you go for? If it? Maggie Thatcher can run a country on four, <laughs> Mick, he can do some graph. On. Nah, I just, I think it's, I think it's just fab. Next month, we've been doing this for 20 years, yeah, mate. I think it's... Look, you don't want to look. Look, you're thinking, oh, my God, yeah, I don't know. know how old I am. <laughs> no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> did, you catch, did you catch me there? <laughs> He's like, yeah, whatever. Next, go on I, the next... <laughs> you saw that black cloud hanging over my head? No, I think it's just... You just get used to not, you know, needing a lot of sleep. And even if I go to bed at four or five in the morning, sad to say I'm back up at nine. Half nine and... I, I don't know, I just... I don't need a lot of sleep. Anyway, listen, let's take it back, because a lot of people really don't know. You know, people know when they don't know, unless you was there at the beginning of the whole kind of rave thing. You know, you was around, when did you really start kind of playing dance music and stuff? What, what got you into the whole dance music thing? I don't want to say on the air. <laughs> 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 nah, uh, some, some friends took me, obviously around the time when I met you in Groove, they uh -huh. took me to a club that was called Future, that yes. was... Obviously, you know, next door to Spectrum. Lisa Loud DJ. And yep. Paul Oakenfold, yeah, Nancy man. Noise. Mm -hmm. And to be quite honest, I never looked back. I, 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 I really wanted what to. What was you into before that? What, what was you listening to? Crime. <laughs> <laughs> Sad to say. Uh, but I'm a man who tells the truth. No, that's, that's why you're it, here, bro. It, I mean, it took me away from, obviously, that kind of life. So that is why. Do you really think that? Do you really think if it wasn't for music? I, I, I don't think, I know. Yeah, yeah I totally believe that I would mostly be doing maybe what Bird. I'll... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, what I was good at. Well, <laughs> at yeah, no, uh, uh, just, I, I'd mostly say that it really did help, you know, it really did help me out with the company that I was keeping. For I sure. changed company and uh -huh. it just... Yeah, you know, it really did what show me. Though? What was it about? What was it about? Because, you know, we go clubbing all the time. People go clubbing. But, you know, I went to Future and I can't even explain what it was about it that kind of changed me now. What what, 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 what was it? Was it a feeling that you had? Was it the whole... Uh, I mean, like you, before that, you know, we'd mostly go out with the people that I grew up with and ran from the area, maybe like 50 of us and it, it, it was a bit, you know, in them days, early 80s, middle 80s, it was, I don't know, there was clicks from this area, clicks, and it was just so nice to go into a club where there weren't that kind of tension, it was a lot like, oh, oh, you know, for sure. It, it was just, it was, no one looked at what each other had on, there was no Black or white, that didn't matter. Yeah, black, white, it just, it, it didn't matter. People were just there for all the same thing, and that was to have a good time, you know? And that that's what kind of, you just thought to yourself, man, this is me. Totally. And, and what happened next? What, what what made that that transition from going into future to being a DJ? Uh, well, it weren't, I was, I was DJ and I was really into hip hop, and uh -huh. it was, I, I went to see Eric B, uh, LL Cool J and Rakim when I was really early, and I was quite intrigued by what Eric B was doing with the decks and stuff. And I, I like music, I love music, and I was kind of a bit bored with the talking on the radio. That's what really got me into DJing and someone going, oh, you're quite good, I'm going to give you a job. And I never looked back from there, really. Wicked, man. So, is it... I, I mean, DJing's different now. I mean, you, there wasn't so many DJs around at the time, was there? 
Well, we got into it, I could mostly say, an handful of people within the scene. You being one of them, Groove, me. We'd do five hours and we was lucky if we got 25 quid. So that tells me that you, me, Groove, Jack. Frosty, yeah, Brian. They, they were the people for me that got into it for the love. It seems like a lot of people now have got this... Like when we was kids, everyone wanted to be a footballer. It seems like you've got this... Loads of people want to be a DJ because of the status that it brings and not because they want to do that job. It's the same with the MC, and I, that's what I feel. It just... I, I don't know if they're in it for the right reasons. Money's the first thing they want to talk about rather than... You know uh, what, Mick, as well? You know what? It... You know what it was in the day as well? It was just the love of DJ. And we didn't even have that much tunes, you know? Yeah. It weren't like now, you know, you got, you got your hands on so many tunes. We didn't even have that much tunes. We just loved playing the music, man. Well, yeah, it takes me back to maybe one day me and Groove finished. The club finished. It was me, Groove and Jarvis in the club. I think the club finished at 8 o'clock in the morning. And me and Groove was like, we better go home. It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. There's only me, you and Jarvis here playing records. And again, it was just because we loved it. And I think me and Groove went home and then we went up the West End buying records, you yeah. know? It's just, with that 25 or 50 quid that you got, you'd go and reinvest it back in because you were just glad to be a part of it, you know? For real, man. Rather than, oh, am I going to get a... A play and, yeah, and I don't you know, do this and I'm going to do that and how much money am I getting? 25 quid, Mickey. Standard. I remember playing out and getting 25 pound and... And smiling. Smiling. Happy and just because we played music <laughs> and because 25 pound was worth yeah. a lot more than <laughs> <laughs> 20 pound five was about 150 pound now, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? But anyway, listen, we're going to go into a track. Mickey Finn is in the house. He's going to do a little mix for us. We're going to be talking next about the whole jungle era and uh, up to this present time. So it's Mickey Finn in the house, Radio 1. This is how we do
the background, you can hear Faceless, the Marcus Intellects remix of a comics track. We've got Mickey Finn in the house. He's got a mix coming up. He's just shuffling through his tunes, etc., etc. Mickey, what a crazy thing with that phone. I, um, we can't even go into the real details uh, yeah, now, yeah, but yeah. how mad was that, man? <laughs> and you know what? I phoned up the old dear, and she's lovely, and she's, um, she really wants the phone. <laughs> even the technicians are like, what are these two talking about? I know, we, uh, you know what? I told him I'm going to tell him this story at, before the show's over because it is the most incredible uh. story ever. <laughs> but anyway, I rang the old dear and she said uh, she wants the phone. She wants it. Oh, she wants she, it. She doesn't even want the money. <laughs> <laughs> she wants the phone, Mickey. What am I going to do, dog? <laughs> no, you've got to take it off. It's <laughs> yours. <laughs> But anyway, listen, we've got a few uh, questions from listeners. Hey, Mickey, really curious, what's your ringtone at the minute? Anything cool, or maybe it's an irritating one? Paris. People, people do ask. Oh, right. <laughs> All promotion goes and, just no, ringtone. Listen, who is Paris? Who is Paris, then? We, Paris is a girl who's in the studio with me right now. Uh -huh. She is... I've been working with Paris since she was 13. 13 and a half. Okay. Uh, she is an artist that I've gone on a bit of a project with. It's an hip hop and R and B project. Uh, I hope, I think she will be a star. And what kind of what kind of style are we talking about? Uh, it's, like a, is it a Miss Dynamite kind of thing, or I would Lady Sovereign maybe? Nah, nah, nah. She's she sings. I would put her up there, if not more, with the girl that just won X Factor. No way, get out of here. Listen. Are I, you being serious, dog? I, I, I've got to be honest with you. That girl that won X Factor has got the best voice I've ever heard of Liz. Um, any girl from this country. Okay. We're on. Seriously, yeah? We're on. It's like that. No, but you know what, Mick? I've you built her what? up such a big pedal stall now. You know what? <laughs> I know, listen, I, I, I've known you for a long time, and I know you don't say things like that unless you really believe it, so... Well, I do. I do. I, to I totally believe, I think we're at the stage now, we've been working, it's been a really hard slog, we have a, she comes around every Tuesday and Thursday after school, she's just turned 15 now, so, her manager's here, he's sort of like a guardian, uh -huh. kind of, uh, I just totally think she's got what it takes. And so, is, is, what are you doing, producing well, and... Well, I've kind of signed her on a development deal. For sure. So, she's signed to Thin People Productions, but... <laughs> Personally, she's way too big. I think, I believe, she's way too... I'm, I want to get her a major deal. That's incredible, man. That is incredible. So, she's here. I hope you ain't gonna, like, elbow her, because she's got to do at least one track. <laughs> yeah. You've got to hear this girl sing. I, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do something. We're gonna do a little thing. We're gonna do a little thing, definitely. But I've got to read out a few more of these emails. Okay. What's the maddest night you've ever played in your life? Ooh. I... I'd say a draw between the Millennium at the Docklands Arena and yeah. Glastonbury. Which Glastonbury are you talking about? Uh, 2000, I think you and Groove was in the, uh, yeah, Radio 1 was doing a kind of VIP yeah, tent. that's right, that's and right. And me and Gavin did the last set on the last night, which, I don't know, it finished at 12 o'clock. And it, it was incredible. It was, it was just, in, it's, it's mind-blowing. And what about, um... That uh, thing in Scotland, man. Yeah, that thing in Scotland was quite, what, what years ago? Yeah, what was that uh, called again? Well, it was, ah, oh, Techno... Technodrome. Te Technodrome. Te yeah, Technodrome, wasn't it? Technodrome, yeah, 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 yeah. That was cool, but, I mean, you as a DJ, you would appreciate there was a bigger system on the stage at yeah, Glastonbury no in some of the clubs, yeah. on the stage, than some of the clubs that I've played in. Yeah, yeah. Like, the real. monitoring system was... Incredible. Like, 30k or something. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and last question. What's the strangest request you've ever had as a DJ? Pass. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> I can't say. I'm a married man. <laughs> I told me what I tell me wife everything. <laughs> she, seriously. Uh, no, there's some strange, uh, yeah. <laughs> some strange offers have been put on the table. I'll take you to the candy shop. They're one of them ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, listen, Mick, I tell you what, it's, it's all kind of gone skew with because we're kind of running out of time. I've got to get you together to do this mix and... One more question, because I've got, I've got to ask you, you know, lots of people still say Mickey back from back in the day with Bass Man. What's your plans for the future, DJing-wise? You are you still in it, Mick? 
Yeah, I still love it, you know. I, I think a lot of people uh, are, are kind of... I, I've always wanted to put on parties. Mm -hmm. Not because I, I just think I've got something to donate. A bit yeah. like why I originally went in the studio. I just thought I, I've got something that I want to that I want to donate to the scene. It's the same kind of idea when I had when I wanted to put on parties. It ain't like Mickey wants to stop DJing. I, I just wanted to put on some parties, you know. For real. I still for real. love DJing. It's still for me my first and main love. Maybe some people got a bit of the wrong idea, um, you know, Mickey's a promoter now, and Mickey's not a promoter now, I just... You know what, I'm, Mick, I've got to be honest with you, I I've think got many fingers, a little bit more, though. I've got many but, fingers uh, and many pies. It, I just, it's just, uh, I, I love DJing, I mean, it ain't like I've got... I know, got cut out the game. Yeah, it's just, uh, a lot of people think, you know, you, you kind of, uh, you don't want to DJ no more and, and you want to promote, you know? Well, this is proof in the pudding that Mickey Finn still... Are done out there. Mickey Finn in the mix for the next 30 minutes. People dead. Go fly my Mara and Bossman Ed. People dead. Go fly my Mara and Bossman Ed. Now all the muscle from me is just not the sound. The new thing out the road named Sean. Uh, oh my God, God Almighty, this is the original ragamuffin tip of Irish. And you know and I know and I know that you know that when it comes to Mickey Finn, he threw it up like a pine down on a pin. We come to earth them feeling. We look and tell them this. Well, everything I'm about to tell you is highly classified. Uh, we don't discuss it with anybody. We're testing a new helicopter prototype. We've got our own pilot. But, uh, your city's been chosen. Flash up your, flash up your light up. 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 Flash up your
two, two, two. Put this, 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 this together, two, two, two.
10 minutes, Mickey Fit. Old school junk
think some little men and women. Mickey Finn drew some old school that man you went in deep Mickey we try we try but listen we've got very little time we've got a competition um, you, you've got what, what you got what you got for us bruv uh, I've got a UDG record bag too many DJs come on your show they need to stick their hand in their pocket a <laughs> uh, pair of Sennheiser headphones a few tracks uh, Mickey Pussy Clark Finn dub play uh -huh. pair of Stanton Trapmaster needles what Cuddly bear, cabbage, nut. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. I mean, there's, you know, there's some good little fan presents there. If there's anyone out there that likes me. <laughs> well, I don't know, man. We, we might not get anything. <laughs> 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 See, no, I'll no. tell the truth, I'll tell the truth. <laughs> and what's the question? Well, the answer's in the show. Yeah. Simple one. How long have I been DJing this year? Right, so if you've been listening carefully, you will know. Uh, listen back and listen again, and you'll get a wicked prize. Wicked prize. Listen, Mick, we've got to go, man. Um, thank you so much for coming in. It's been... It, I don't know how comes you've never been in before, but um, thank you very much for coming in. If you want to listen to... Anything again online, Fabio at bbc.co.uk. If you want to listen to that hardcore mix, if you want to find out the track listings. Anyway, the last tune, I, I've been playing something different, something away from drum and bass. Uh, Mick, just introduce the last tune I'm going to play. Cause it's, uh, it's, it's called So Good, and it's one of the tracks that we've been doing with Paris. Wicked, man. Let's check this out. <laughs> So that's it from me tonight. Remember that you can listen again to the show anytime you want and you can check full track listings online. In the meantime, thanks for listening. Next up is in New DJs We Trust. This week is The Plastician with two hours of dubstep and grime. Listen out for this name, Paris and More. Last tune. Respect to the Mickey Finn. Respect for listening. It's Fabio saying holla and peace out. Together and make the most of this time Cause girls wanna have fun, I'm 